Today I'm talking about Star Wars Rivals that came out by Funko Games. Funko Games has been putting out a lot of, I mean, they've, they've been making a lot of different board games, of course, but they've put out several of these like collectible miniature games. They have um, Marvel Battle Worlds, they have Disney Kingdomania, and the Star Wars Rivals one. Um, you can see like this is the premier box set, comes with these miniatures here. And then you get boosters that aren't out yet. I hate they didn't come out with the premiere set. They come out, I believe, like in June of this year, 2023. And the boosters, you can get dark side or light side, and you can see all the different characters you can get out of the boosters, which is neat. Very cool. Um, and here's the miniatures from the premiere set. And I like how they did them. Get out of here. Pop them all out and I'll show you. Here's Darth Vader. What's great is the detail on these pre painted fun little miniatures. Even as like the red tint and his lenses that he actually had is the detail on there. The translucent blade. It's really nice. So as Ventress, I mean, look at the detail. A little cloak right here. Look at that. That's fun. Very fun miniature. Look at that. Commander Cody. Whoops. Go that way. Whatever he's doing. And Luke. Luke's eyes are a little, <laughs> a little big. It's a fun stylized miniature. And here's some comparisons. Their, their last, I would say their big um, miniatures collectibles game is Marvel Battle Worlds. And here's some of their miniatures to compare. Like here's Vision. Quite a bit of difference. The Marvel Battle Worlds miniatures are all right. They're not great. They all are pretty much the same pose. See? So there's not too much difference compared to the Star Wars ones. And yet again, size, huge difference. And Star Wars ones have a lot more detail too. They're really nice actually. Um, really cool thing about Rivals over here, I love the dice that comes in a premiere set. It's like a kyber crystal. And yes, it, the sides have one, two, three, one, three, one, two, which I'll get into in a minute, and a V on two sides of it. Very cool dice. I like how it feels. <laughs> and so this comes in the premiere set only. The boosters, I don't have any yet. Like I said, they're not out yet. But the boosters come with is one miniature their cards, and it comes with one regular D6. And so here's some of the cards. You have Saz Ventress. Here's Vader's card. And then I like the artwork on their cards too. See? So the point of the game is locations are gonna come out. And this deck comes with 12 location cards. Jawa Sandcrawler, Yoda's Hut. Whoop, that got mixed in there. Darth Vader's Meditation Chamber. Tana Four Hallway. The Camino Cloning Facility. Beggar's Canyon. Emperor's Throne Room. Crate Trenches. The Lars Homestead. Night Sisters Fortress Entrance. Geonosis Weapons Factory. Yavin Four Rebel Base. Now, I'm not sure if every premiere set comes with these same cards or if they're randomized like they'll be in the boosters. You'll get new ones. I, I'm, I'm, I'm unsure. But <clears throat> how you play the game is you, just, you build a force, dark side force and a light side force of three characters on each side. Now, the premiere set only comes with two characters on each side. So that's given to their... They want you to go buy some boosters. 
But what they did, which was pretty cool, is with the premiere set, they threw in these tokens. You can have a rebel trooper, it's just a token, and you have an imperial trooper. And they each come with one card to play. So you can have a force of three with just a weaker trooper. And the booster sets will, like I said, come with one miniature, but they'll also come with tokens for up to two troopers. So you can play a game, just have one dark side, one light side booster set, and you can do a quick little game. But, I mean, really, the what you're wanting to do is buy the premiere set and buy some booster sets. And how you play the game is you'll get your card. So I have, like, Asajj Ventures. I have Darth Vader's three cards. I have the trooper cards. And you're going to shuffle them all together. I'm not actually playing, so I didn't shuffle it well. Don't hate me. Commander Cody's cards, Luke's cards, the trooper. And you shuffle them all up. All right. And what you do is you lay out three locations. There's the Avon 4 Rebel Base, Geonosis Weapons Factory, and the Night Sisters Fortress Entrance. And you put these tokens here, designating them as number one, number two, and number three. Then, whoever is the first player, and you see the first player has the high ground. And it, every round it switches and go, if the first player is the light side, next time it'll be dark side. Just keep going back and forth who's first player. So you, you'll you deploy your characters. And the whole point of the game is if you see these numbers on every location, point of the game is to win this location, to have the most influence there to where you win this location that goes to you saying you have six points. By the end of the game, which ends when this deck runs out, whoever has the most points wins. Some locations have special, special abilities, some don't. This one, for instance, says, whenever there's a negative one token placed on a character here, place one fewer. I'll get what that means in a minute. So you'll place your figures out. Let's say Commander Cody, or here's his stat card. He starts with five influence. That's how much influence he has to begin with without any modifications. Luke Skywalker starts with four influence. So let's say I'm, I'm wanting to get, um, let's just say Re Rebel Base. Boom, I throw Cody at the Rebel Base. Now it's the dark side's turn. Darth Vader comes in strong with six influence, and Asajj Ventress only has three. She's not that strong, but she has cards that can mitigate it. So, I'm going to throw Vader in there. I'm really wanting to lock that one down. What well, goes back to the light side, and this is where part of the strategy, kind of a mini game in the game itself, um, is you don't know for sure which location is going to score. And what I mean by that is after you play everyone and you put them down in locations, you're gonna roll this dice. And it will tell you location one and two, you'll score. Three, if you sent someone there, they don't do anything. This one says one and three. This one says that location with the highest point value scores. All three of them, three and two. So you don't know. So you risk, if I throw everyone here, oops, sorry. If I throw everyone at this location, it may not score. And we just wasted everything. <clears throat> right now, Cody's five, Darth Vader's six. Right now, Darth Vader's winning. I may have cards to mitigate it. Um, let's just say, say I throw Luke here, just for fun. Let's say I throw Asajj here. And now we have our, Reb, our trooper tokens. I'll throw a rebel trooper in there. And you know what? Dark side will throw a rebel trooper in there. They're having a good fight. So you'll, you'll have a hand of, of three cards. And now each side plays a card secretly and places it face down. So here's my cards I have. I have rebel trooper. The rebel trooper, I can place one negative, to negative one token on an enemy at the rebel trooper location. So here, I could put this negative one token on the rebel troop. On, I'm sorry, on the... 
Imperial Trooper token, making him one influence, or put on Vader, making him five influence. If I put on Vader, it stays with him until he uses a whole turn to go to the back to tank, which he will then heal all of his negative one tokens. So I could put it on him like that, which makes his influence minus one. <clears throat> I have a, here's a Cody card where he's here. Move an ally from Cody's location to another location. So depending on where everyone put their stuff out, if you, you have this card in your hand, you could strategically maybe place Luke where he is, knowing that you may be able to move him um, with this card, depending on where the Empire placed their, pe their people. And um, um, you play these cards after the dice is rolled, actually. So you see where the dice is rolled. For instance, let's see. I got two and three. So only these two places are going to score. That's it. So nothing's even happening here. They're just having a battle. Nothing's going on. That place isn't even going to score. We wasted all that. So let's say, for instance, let's say I had thrown Luke there. Well, now it's time to play cards. I can play move an ally from Cody's location to another. I'm going to move Luke here. You may reveal a force user's card from your hand. If you do, the ally you moved has plus two influence this round. And so I don't have a force user's card in my hand. So and when it says reveal, it just shows the enemy. But of course, I could have moved Luke from there to here to mess with the size of interest. Let's say for the sake of playing the game, let's say I do that. Let's see what the Empire's card was. And you play that face down. Let's see what the Empire has. Darth Vader, your powers are weak, old man. Your opponent must discard their hand for each unique character on cards discarded. Place negative one on that character, okay? Place negative one on Darth Vader. Double Darth Vader's influence. It doesn't matter because, remember, we're not scoring it here, so it's not going to do anything. In Asajj, you may discard an ally's card from your hand. If you do, move Ventress to that ally's location. You may place one on it, negative one. And so, yet again, there's no point in moving her to an ally's location. So, really, there's not... This is all we can really play. Your opponent must discard their hand for each unique character. Put some minus one. So, we, we put our cards down. We flip them both over. And the light side goes first. So, remember, he's going to... Move Luke, oh, sorry, I did it, from his location, boom. And Luke has plus two influence this round. Because, ah, you may reveal a force user's card. If you do, they have plus two influence. I don't have a force user's card. I just have another Cody and a Rebel Trooper. So, no, I just moved Luke there. That's all. <clears throat> In the Empire. The Empire, your opponent must discard their hand for each unique character. Discard this way, place negative one. So they'll discard the rest of their hand. Only one unique character, Commander Cody. So I have to place a negative one on Commander Cody. Whoop. So he goes down from five influence to four influence right now. So we do that. We score locations. Yet again, this one, nothing. This one, nobody's there. No one gets it. So we look here. Asajj is three. Luke is four. We didn't play any cards to mitigate, change any of that. Luke wins that location. Ah, but wait, there's more. Let's look at the special ability on the location. Geonosis Weapons Factory. Characters deployed here with three influence or lower have plus two influence here. Asajj sneaks away the win with five influence to Luke's four. Empire wins this one and gets the four victory points on it. When that after that, everyone goes back. Boom, boom, boom. You put another location down in that spot. Now we have Lars Homestead, which has five victory points, no special abilities, and you draw back up to three cards. So this time I drew for Luke. Luke has plus three influence this round. You may draw an action card 
then discard a card from your hand. Okay, okay. And I drew for a size. This one has a mission. This one's interesting. So, a size with this card can place two negative on each enemy that already has a negative, or place one if the enemy doesn't. If an enemy at her location has at least four negative tokens on them, if that happens, then you complete this mission. And what that means, if that happens, you complete the mission, you, this card counts as four victory points. So you got your locations, et cetera, et cetera. At the end of the game, you add up all your victory points for all your locations you won and any missions you completed. Um, let's see if there's any. Yeah, Vader didn't, Vader didn't have a mission. <clears throat> so it's only a size has one mission. Vader didn't have any. Let's see in this deck. I know, yeah, Commander Cody has this mission. Score from hand if you score a location where the highest influence character is an enemy. And so the highest influence on the enemy's card, like Darth Vader would be six, Cody's five. And then if you mitigate it with different things and you win, you get to, uh, you complete this mission. And there's a few more other cards. And so you just keep going back and forth like that. And really the, the strategy is pretty deep of figuring out what the heck, where you're going to send your people and what cards you're going to play and what the heck the enemy's doing, where they're going to go. And of course, it's, there's randomness to it with a dice roll. But the randomness, to me, is fun. It makes it a fun game. This is, I think, intended... I think intended to be a family game uh, for kids because of the the miniature collection aspect. But I have two children. I have a ten year old and a six year old. My six year old can't play this game. My, there's too much involved in it. The cards, the cards make it to where it's not a kids game. I mean, this is there's a lot of strategy and tactics here. A lot of. Um, really complicated, but in a fun way, um, gameplay and, and decisions you have to make that a, a child, I don't really, I mean, he, he, he wouldn't be able to do it. My 10 year old, um, she may be able to, we haven't tried yet. I, I mean, I, I think she would be able to, but the Marvel Thanos stone game, they can play easily. This one, this one is a kid's game, Marvel Thanos stone. Um, it's straight up a kid's game. It's a fun kids game, and it feels like a kids game. I mean, it's there's not much, there's not really any strategy or tactics to it. It's just going and and defeating little locations, uh, and it's a co-op game too. That's so you just work together and and defeat enemies at different locations. This, of course, is not a co-op game, and which all that leads me to believe that it's really. It's really not made for kids, um, not really a family game. I'm really looking forward to playing this with my friends, uh, to be honest with you, because like I said, it's really a deep strategic tactical game. I'm looking on the box to see if it says age anywhere. It says age seven and up. I disagree with it. I, I completely disagree with it. Um, there's... A lot of, for a seven-year-old, there's a lot of complicated reading and comprehension involved. I mean, a seven-year-old ain't going to pick up on all that. Let's be real. Come on. Oh, overall, I think it's a very fun game. It's a very fun game. The price point, I, I think this box was only, is like $19, um, around 20 bucks. Comes with four miniatures, really good miniatures, all the cards. And then each booster set that comes with a miniature comes with more location cards. Come with that miniatures um, on deck of cards is $5. And the miniatures are really nice. Look at them. I want that Yoda. Look at that Yoda. Let's see. Boba Fett looks great. I mean, look at these. Grand Moff Tarkin. Let's go.
Supreme Leader Snoke, nah. But what's cool is they have miniatures from the prequels, from the original trilogy, from the sequels. I mean, they just, they got a little bit of everybody. So they can go all over the place with this. I think that's really neat. That's Star Wars Rivals. I'm looking forward to playing more of it. I'm looking forward to getting some boosters. Very cool game. Let me know what you think.